Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. This is my second attempt at actually doing this video. I recorded the entire thing in two parts, and now I can't find the files, so... Well, we're going to start over, basically. Uh, in front of you, since I don't have the box anymore, you see the frame for the War Games Atlantic Spiders. Sci-Fi Spiders. And if you haven't seen these yet, this is a pretty unique kit. Now, I know, let's be honest, you know, sure, there's bones, plastic spiders, or, you know, cheap Halloween party favor type stuff. If you really wanted to just throw a bunch of junk on the table and call it a day... Yeah, that is an option, but to me that's really dull, and I'd much prefer having an actual kit. And this is the first time that I can think we've ever seen something like this. And what's cool is War Games Atlantic really went above and beyond what was to be expected from a typical giant spider. You have smaller ones for swarms, you've got a wrapped up halfling or hobbit victim, as well as a human sized one. But the coolest part, I think, is the fact that there are sci fi parts on the sprue as well. So you got two different blasters, you got like a sci-fi helmet, a visor, and these weird things that I have yet to figure out. And if you guys know what these little chip tooth things are here, I, I would love to find out. There's also a pair of cybernetic legs on each of the sprues. So putting this together can be a little daunting, I have to admit. There was an article on War Games Atlantic's site. I'm going to put a link down below in case you ever do want to take a look at it yourself before jumping headfirst into trying to build these. One thing you will want to be aware of when you do such a task is the fact that there is a little bit of a method as to how they go together. This is the main body of the spider that my thumbs are poking at the moment. You'll notice that there's these two square cutouts on both sides. That's where you want to start. Those are for a specific pair of legs. This one right here in particular that actually has a little bit of ground touching the tip of the foot to help it actually stand up and balance. Now, as I hurriedly look around to grab a spider to show you that, it's a lot easier to show than just explain. They're all tangled up, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you can see here there is that flat part there, so that's actually going to enable them to stand up when all is said and done. This guy in particular is one of my favorites, I guess. Uh, he actually went together fairly well. He actually is pretty stable. Once you've got that pair of legs attached, you're going to want to go to the hind legs to give it an actual, you know, sense of stability. You want to keep the large abdomen off until the very end. It's going to get in the way. So you can see here. I mean, but actually just... Take all I said with a grain of salt because they are space spiders after all, if you want to go that route, and you can build them however you damn well please. If you want to have the legs in the wrong spots, going backwards, facing upwards, upside down, hey, who's to stop you and say that that's wrong, right? Life has a way, especially in the farthest reaches of the galaxy. So here's a couple of my built ones. Just slide those to the side. I did build a couple sci-fi ones as well, or at least attempt to. This one just has, I think, no, he doesn't actually have any robotic legs. I wasn't sure what to do with their opposite arm. So they don't have, like, a hand to help guide the gun. I guess if you really wanted to pose one of the other legs to be holding it, that would work. I mean, but they've actually got, like, little clawed fingers. I really would have liked to have seen an opposite arm, or maybe we'll get really lucky and we'll see some kind of, you know, spider command support sprue at some future point to help facilitate that. Or if you wanted to go dual blasters, you could do that as well. I do have a painted sample for you guys to show off. I've seen, I put him up here before, if you didn't notice him. He has two cybernetic legs and he has, after having discussions on Daka Daka about how these spiders needed hats, I searched high and low and I really couldn't find anything in my collection at the time. It's just a leftover hat from a Conquest 100 Kingdoms militia man. Paint came on really nice, other than the fact that it was the end of the rattle can sealer, and you can see those little white spots popping up. That's always a shame. Thankfully, I got more. So here he is compared to a typical average human, or an average marine, which I say would be more appropriate in this case, considering he is armed with a high-powered energy weapon. A bigger 
version of the Marines, if you want. As well as a ganger. Who knows? Maybe there's some giant spider arachnid xenos lurking in the underhive. I'm not sure. It could work, right? But I gotta say, after searching high and low, I did come across a kit that worked perfectly for these guys. And that is Warlord's Pike and Shot English Civil War, guys. There are individual hats on the sprues of infantry. And then you can have the most euphoric of arachnids. Milady. So if you wanted to go that route, I don't know. From henceforth, all of my spiders are going to have to have the most compelling of hats as they enter the battlefield. And I gotta say, once you've got a few of them put together, they do have some presence. And the other thing is, they're little smaller baby companions here. I gotta say, I've, a couple of times now, when I threw these in a box, mistook them for actual spiders. And that's funny because there's been times where I had some older bones spiders, about the same size, that didn't have any bases. Had them in a box upstairs in a closet, and I was getting them out for something, and I saw one, and I was like, oh, I don't remember painting it like that. No, it was actually a real live spider, and he did not appreciate me trying to manhandle him. So we eventually chased him out, and he escaped with his life that time. I don't think I've encountered him since, but I think they've, they've learned to stay out of the gaming components at least. So, interesting kit. Um, the only thing, like I said, is I feel they are a bit of a challenge to figure out where all those legs go. Obviously, the hind legs, if you go with the really long ones, I think those work. Getting everything else in there, it was a bit of a challenge, but I think the more I built, the better I felt about them, and honestly, I can confidently go and build the rest of the box. However, I'm holding off on that just because I feel like I, there's something else I can do with them, and I just haven't figured out what yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, by all means, please let me know what you'd like to see me attempt to concoct with these guys. My first initial thought before we even found out about the space weapons for these guys was I wanted to have some of them wielding close combat weapons. I felt like they need to be carrying axes or something. I mean, yeah, they got, you know, the spiky little talon things that I already got chastised about painting in bone color, but Whatever. I mean, why not? If they're able to build guns, why can't they use tools and, you know, shields and knives or swords? But I feel like spiders would use axes. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why. But I don't know. If you guys have any thoughts or suggestions on how to further play around with these, I'm thinking some really thin limbs. Like, maybe some of the old Mantic Elf limbs might work for those front ones or replace the mandibles with something else. I don't know. I'm really curious. If you guys have any spare bits and you're somewhat in the area, do hit me up. Send me a message. Maybe we can uh, swap some parts. I would love to see what else we can come up with with these guys. With that said, we'll put a link down below to War Games Atlantic site. Like I said, and I'll have those instructions if you want to take a look at them yourself. And hopefully you'll come up with some crazy monstrosities as well. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.